Um, I have uh, been a part of um, and kind of um, associated with the Movement for a People's Party uh, for the last maybe two years or so uh, since I found out about what it was. Um, uh, the way that I found out about the Movement for People's Party, just to kind of give you a background on uh, my association with them, um, I didn't I didn't know about them till uh, you know I would say like twenty late like l mid twenty seventeen, and I really didn't pursue a whole lot of what they were about until much later in that year. I found out about them. Um, after I opened for Lee Camp in Pittsburgh um, at the Fun House and Mr. Small's uh, great venue there. And uh, we did a show um, and I met uh, I met Suzanne, who is part of Movement for a People's Party. She's she's, a, a, you know, a fixture in, in Pittsburgh. Um, and we chit chatted, uh, you know, after the show. And I got to learn a little bit about them. And I said, oh, that's that's, you know, what, what they're doing is is very interesting. You know, I, I wish them all the success, but um, I don't I don't know what what my role or what my part in any of this is um, going to be. And, you know, I kind of kept in touch with them. I would invite them to 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 come see shows and things of that sort. And then I decided, you know, um, during my album recording in, in 2019, last year is really when I stepped up, I think, a little bit more in terms of. Um, possibly what I can do to, to help get the word out about this and, uh, and, and really push on what they're talking about, what this coalition that they're building, what this new party that they're building is really all about. And I think more people should, um, should know about them. So, uh, for my album recording, I, uh, made sure that they were, uh, they were set up with a table. Um, so they set up a table, talked to some people, got a few people to sign up, which is excellent, which is great. Um, and I did the same thing again uh, this past December um, where, you know, they got to meet some more people as well. And I hope more people got to know them. So, you know, I'm 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 hoping that I can just utilize what small little platform that I have, what little what little route that I have, uh, you know, on uh, as a presence on the Internet and as a presence in Pittsburgh um, to get the word out about them. I've also had uh, Nick Brana, who, who is uh, one of the uh, founders of Movement for a People's Party on my podcast. And a lot of the information that we're going to talk about today comes from his interview with Ron Placone. Um, and it'll this will be a good jumping off point because I am going to have Nick come back um, and, uh, and discuss a lot more about Movement for a People's Party a lot more about um, what they're what what we are discussing today, and kind of go a little bit more in depth, a little bit more in terms of their platforms and what they're what they stand for, and and uh, you know go go forward from there. Um, so I'm going to be recording something uh, next week with Nick, which is very exciting. But this will be a good introduction to everybody, um, you know, to to get to to get a better understanding of what Movement for a People's Party actually is, how you can support them, and why it's necessary right now. Um, you know, um, and, and I really believe in what they're doing. I really believe that we need to get out of this duopoly that we have, which is not really a duopoly, and I'll talk about that in a, in, in a moment. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I have a kind of... I've always been this outsider in society. Um, I'm, I'm an Indian immigrant that's now a citizen of the United States, and I've never felt like I fit into either culture. Um, I've never particularly felt like I was like a very good uh, Indian person. Um, I never really fit into the framework of what an Indian supposed to be. And then when I came here, I was, I was like a double outsider because I never really understood what it, what the American culture was. I never particularly agreed with it all the way with that either. I felt like the, there, there was a lot of frivolity. There was a lot of, um, you know, hubris and, and, and boastful nature in, in, in American society. Um, you know, and, um, this, this admiration 
for um, anti-intellectualism that happened in the States. Um, you know, I never particularly understood it. I always kind of looked at it um, from an outsider's lens. And, you know, when it comes to politics, uh, I started getting involved, like I started getting interested in politics, at least when I started watching The Daily Show and I was like a nine. Right. And really, the reason why I started watching The Daily Show is because it was funny. I liked I liked Jon Stewart. Um, and uh, and, you know, I I wanted to understand American culture a little bit more. Um, so that was kind of the, the first way that I was trying to understand American culture. And so once I kind of started doing that, I, you know, I, I never I never really considered myself to be a Democrat or a Republican. Um, I think when I was a younger and didn't really understand the state of politics, I, or, or sort of the subtle nuances of politics, um, or economics or ideologies, and I was forming my own, um, I think I would, I would listen to mostly what Democrats had to say because it seemed like they were on my side. Uh, and the older I grew, uh, by the time I was maybe in my 20s, early 20s, I don't particularly think that I was a Democrat. Um, and I never really espoused myself to be um, a Democrat. I, I, I think, you know, th when you, especially for comedy, it was a lot easier in my younger days um, to kind of make fun of Republicans because they were so outwardly uh, in my opinion, absurd and ridiculous. So it was kind of a little bit easier, but you know, the, the daily show, which is, which is sort of really for me ends up being the root for, for, for a lot of, um, my understanding of American culture and my understanding of American comedy and, and politics in general. Um, you know, Jon Stewart took shots at both sides. Jon Stewart hammered the Democrats and the Republicans and, in this era of um, oversaturated uh, mainstream media, in this era of oversaturation of content, we seem to forget that. We have a limited memory span, uh, which, which we really don't. Um, our, our brains are able to hold so much more information than we give it credit for. Uh, it's just we have no idea how to access said information, so we have to kind of repetitively go down this track. But, you know... Um, John Stewart attacked both sides, and I felt like he was making some valid arguments as my as my belief systems were um, being formed, as as my ideologies were being formed, and as they evolve and as they grow, um, they hopefully get sharper and better, and uh, hopefully become more humanitarian um, or, or rather more humanist. I think that's sort of the direction that I'm going. Um, but I've never considered myself to be a Democrat. I've never really considered um, wanting to be a part of the Democratic Party. Uh, so, you know, I, I got my citizenship in December and I had to register as a Democrat in the state of Pennsylvania because the reason I even got my citizenship in the first place was either to vote for Bernie Sanders or Tulsi Gabbard. And, you know, they've they both kind of been uh, become disappointments um, in regards to the in regards to the notion that you know you can trust the candidate in general um, and over the years I have become more interested rather in in the candidate that you support in uh, talking about the ideas that you support um, I, I feel like that is a that is a far more important and far more interesting of conversations to have rather than saying I'm, I'm a Bernie supporter or a Tulsi supporter or a Warren supporter or a Trump supporter or whatever it is. Um, what, what do you believe in? What do you believe in? Um, and does the, you know, and once I started thinking about it in that lens, one, especially in my early twenties, once I started thinking about what do I believe in? What are, what are the ideas? What are the, the philosophies? What are the, the politics, the economics that I believe in? What, what is, what is the nature of humanity that I believe in? Um, and how can I live my life according to that? And do I have any any sort of uh, political entity that represents that? It was very um, it was very evident that I don't. Um, not in the current mainstream establishment level of politics. 
Um, I think the closest thing that I can get to right now in terms of an established party is possibly the Green Party. Um, and, you know, I don't agree with them 100% all the time either. Uh, and and that's, I think that's still good, right? Like you should have some um, pushback on the party that you support, on, on the leadership that you support. You should be able to be critical of them. You shouldn't be able to look through... Uh, everything that they do in, with, you know, with, with rosy colored lenses and, and things of that sort. And that's what's happening with a lot of people right now um, as being Democrats is that they look at the party through these rose colored lenses. Um, and what's also kind of interesting to me, too, as I'm kind of going in the stream of consciousness situation here, <laughs> um, is that... Um, there's a lot of people that in the beginning of all this, after 2016, uh, after they saw what the Democratic National Committee did to the DNC, did to uh, Bernie Sanders, a lot of these people that, that believed themselves to be progressives and things, you know, were really vehemently against the Democratic Party. And they said, well, the establishment is, is corrupt and um, and look at how they treated, you know, this 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 politician that has been on the side of the working class for so long. Um, and they came out and they were like, we need to have a revolution. Da, 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 da. And they were very vehemently supporting these sort of radical different ideas. And then the second that Bernie um, endorsed Joe Biden. There was this polarized shift. Uh, where there was a, a good amount of Bernie supporters that uh, essentially were like, we're still not going to support the establishment. That's not what we signed up for. The only reason why we were, you know, registering with this establishment party was to vote for this non-establishment guy, this radical leadership that, that we thought, well, at least we thought that it would be a radical leadership. And then there's a bunch of them, and this is the part that kind of gets me, is they completely forget all of that stuff. And they go, well, no, the party is what we need to support. They forget the corruption. They forget how you know broken the system is. And they go, well, we need to we need to support the Democratic Party because, well, you know, it's the Democrats. They're good people. They're at heart. They're good people. They're just stuck in a corrupt system when they are the representatives of the system themselves. Um, you know, and and the Democrats, you know, they really hate this progressive alternative third party wing of uh, of folks on the left more than they hate the republicans i have gotten so much more attack from um from hardcore party line democrats tried and two democrats that are like i have never voted for any other party except for the democrats because the democrats are the best thing in the fucking world and they're the ones that are going to save this country like they always have you know, and it's just sort of the same sort of um, uh, fanatical rhetoric. You know, there's really nothing else that I can come up with right now that, but fanatical uh, that you hear from the Republicans or that you hear from evangelical Christians, that there's nothing else out there. And this is the way that it has to be. Um, and, I, and I've gotten more attacks in the last probably four years from that side than I have from conservatives. In fact, what's interesting to me too, and I've mentioned this a few times as well, is I, in the last four years, well, even at least since like late 2015, I've had more conservatives come to my shows and enjoy my shows and buy my merch and follow my work than I have liberals and people on the left. I'll have people on the left come and criticize me for you know, making fun of um, establishment politics and making fun of democratic leadership and people on the right will come up and say boy that was not what I expected it to be I thought it was going to be a lot of bashing of me and what I believe in but it seems like we believe in some similar things you know and Look at the way that they attacked Bernie and Tulsi. And these were Democrats. These were Democrats that attacked Bernie. And Tulsi was, um, you know, part of the Democratic leadership. 
she was in the DNC. She was she was going to be, you know, they were grooming her to take over the DNC and be the DNC leader. And she pushed back and supported Bernie Sanders. And so she, they threw her under the bus. You know, they, Russiagate failed on Trump. It didn't prove fucking anything, right? And then the whole narrative of collusion changed to, well, obstruction of justice. Okay, but that's not what you were arguing for three years. That's not why you levied fucking conspiracy theories for three years. And they, and they shifted that over to uh, Bernie and Tulsi that they were Russian agents, that they're colluding with Russia, and um, they had no evidence and no proof of it, right? But the country is, that is not indicative of what the country really is. There's a lot of polls that say that, um, you know, people aren't Republicans or Democrats. That, that, that is a continuing poll. And there is a fracture in the left, right? There's a, there's a big fracture in the left, um, and a lot of it has to do with the definition of what a progressive really is. Uh, there's, there's, you know, there, there is a very singular focus on that definition. It's the same thing with socialists. I think, I think people have a very singular, defined notion of what these words mean, what these ideologies mean. And if you don't fit, if you don't fit into that, then you don't, you're not that thing, and and it fractures the movement. Um, and, it, and it affects the numbers of people that, that support these movements that actually understand what it is. Uh, but in reality, as uh, Nick Barana points out in the interview with Ron Placone, is that we really are the majority. Um, there's a lot of people that believe in these ideas that are considered progressive or socialist or whatever it is, right? Whatever the, whatever the fucking label they've espoused to it, whatever the label that they have levied fucking attacks over and over again at, uh, that they have smeared and they've run propaganda campaigns about um, the issues that 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 that, that these, these labels represent are actually the majority. There's a lot more people that want Medicare for all. There's a lot more people that want major environmental reforms and a lot more people that want to take money out of politics, a lot more people that want a less co corrupted government leadership, a lot more people that do want a universal basic income tied into a federal jobs guarantee, a lot more people that want a plan for automation, a lot more people that want better housing conditions, right? Like the, the, there's a whole movement going on right now about uh, how how we need a rent freeze and we need a, a better adjusted economic system that we can use during this pandemic and then coming out of this pandemic. Going forward, we need to change a lot of that stuff. Um, and a lot of people, the reason why, even though they believe in these things, they're very afraid to call themselves, um, you know, these terms and, and continue using these terms is because there is that propaganda that's against it. That if you do call yourself a socialist, then you're, then, you know, you, oh, you're a danger to this country. Or if you call yourself a progressive, then you don't care about conservatives, that you don't care about liberals, then you don't care about the importance of electoral politics or, or whatever it is, right? Uh, but if you look at it, all the people that con con consider themselves to be socialist, part of the socialist alternative, the DSA, uh, the Green Party, uh, any environmental activists, even conservatives, even libertarians, even some some constitutionalists, right? Um, you know, the these people all kind of have very similar belief systems, if not the same. Um, so it's really about creating a coalition uh, surrounding all of those people. Thank you so much for tuning into this video. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure that you hit the like button, share this out with some friends, with some enemies, anybody that you might think would enjoy content like this, and make sure that you are subscribed to my channel. Uh, during this quarantine, I'm gonna be putting out videos uh, pretty much every single day surrounding ideas like the one you just heard. Uh, so if you enjoyed this and want more, uh, then go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Uh, I would also tell you guys about some live stand-up comedy dates, but at the moment, I, uh, I don't have any. As a touring comedian, I am uh, unfortunately grounded and uh, have to stay put till, till this whole calamity ends. Uh, so hopefully uh, in, in the next few months, I'll, be, I'll, I'll have some stand-up dates for you guys. Uh, and I am working on a Zoom stand-up comedy show and I will give details to that 
uh, as, uh, as details to that come out. Uh, but in the meantime, enjoy these videos, and if you have the ability to donate, if you can make a donation, uh, you can become a sustaining member or make a one-time donation over at ramennoodlescomedy.com slash donate. Uh, that's R-A-M-A-N noodlescomedy.com slash donate. Any little bit uh, will help, but I understand that everybody's going through a pretty difficult time right now. So donating or making any sort of financial contribution is not necessary. All my content is going to be up uh, 100% for free for everybody to enjoy, uh, regardless of your financial situation. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it, and uh, I hope you guys will come back and check out more videos. Till then, we'll see you on the road.